So, gentlemen, the big uh, fight is coming up on Friday. You guys are going to be on the call. Um, what are you expecting out of the fight? I'm expecting producer Joe to just mangle douche, timber douche. Um, now, it's we're going a half hour. Now, if Joe beats him early, like in 30 seconds, that means we have like 29 and a half minutes to kill. I'm not sure we can do that, so I'm asking Joe to toy with him for five rounds, just so we have something we can talk about. For the quality of the broadcast, you mean? Well, that's all I'm worried about. Do you think you could fill, help fill 29 minutes if this ends in 30 seconds, Larry? I can do my best. I mean, it would be a hell of a post-game show. Yeah, it will. What are you, what are you looking forward for, uh, to for making your big debut in the in the announcing booth? Well, I'm going to be kind of nervous like I was when I interviewed Seamus, but I can suck it up and see what happens. What do you, uh, there's been a lot of controversy over who you've, who you've picked in this fight. Uh, apparently producer Joe's camp is not very happy with you. Um, what do you what do you think is going to be the end result? Who do you who are you picking to win? Well, I hate to say the thing, but I'm going with Timothy because he said he's been using the ammo pack that you can get at certain superstores. And you think that will provide the edge that he needs, even though Joe has the experience having fought at PTs before. Well, sometimes experience can be a Blessing and a curse at the same time, but I'm just I'm just going to say Timberfake. But Timberfake got knocked out in a sparring match. Well, I didn't see that video, but I I heard he's been I heard he got bloody. He's a bitch. He's a little play baby bitch. And you're going to say Joe produce Joe's going to bitch slap him? Joe's going to kill him. Do you and think I'm looking forward to that? I know we're supposed to be. I won't be biased on the broadcast. What do you think about that, Larry? You're trying to be biased or not biased? I'm trying to be not biased. I just want. I just. I'm just going to have one thing and one thing only. I want to do my job as a broadcast journalist. I want to call a fight, even though I'm rooting for different. I want to try to call a fight right down the middle. What is the job of a broadcast journalist? Well, I'm supposed to do the job as in dig up everything they know about each competitor, but... Well, Timber Fagan won't be tough. Just go on the dirty.com and look at all the po pictures he posts of himself. You're talking about a guy who hangs out at the airport when he knows celebrities are coming in town so he can get a picture taken with him. He jumped in front of Lady Gaga's SUV as it was leaving and put his face in there and said, I met Lady Gaga. I mean, this guy is a liar. He's a fake. He's a wannabe celebrity hound. He's a douche. That's all you need to find out about him. Okay, but anyway, is he, is, are you comparing Timothy to like, I don't know, Mike Lee? Do you think Mike Lee's a douche? No, I'm not saying he's a douche, he's just, he's always saying he lives by certain Cardinal players, or he's always seeing celebrity, celebrity like Cardinal players in the F taking shape. He's the same as they stalk, they're both stalkers. The difference between the two is that Mike Lee actually has a part-time job at Steak and Shake as a porter, and Timberfake does not have a job. So there is a difference there. I was going to say, how can Timberfake afford to get all that beer he drinks if he doesn't have a job? He finds whores who have money and talks them into buying him drinks. That's what he does. Well, that's news to me. Well, you're going to learn a lot in this fight. Trust yeah. me. Do you think that either of these fighters, and, and Joe in particular, do you think he is too confident going into the match against Timberfake? He seems to be uh, much more confident than Timberfake does. Well, since Joe had that fight with Emac, I'm saying he has a, he's going off of that for his confidence, but this would be uh, Timberfake's first fight. Well, he grew up in South City, so he got into a lot of scraps. I'm sure he's a scrawny little bitch. I'm sure he got beat up a lot as a kid. I bet he has. Do you think, will you be distracted at all by all the beautiful women of PTs walking around, perhaps scantily clad, perhaps uh, almost naked? Will you be distracted uh, going into the broadcast by that? No, well, I'm going, like I said before, I'm going to do my, one job and one job only. And I have to call the Timber Fake producer Joe Fight. Well, this is before, though. I mean, you'll be doing three Foxy Boxing. There's a chance there's some boobs are going to pop out. How will you handle that on the air if they're 
What if they come up to you for an interview after the match with their tits hanging out? Like, well, I want. I might be distracted by that, but I want to do like my job of being a broadcaster and interview them like they would anybody else. Well, you're better than me because tits will be first with me, <laughs> and then the broadcasting will be second. So, so I want. You guys have both picked opposite sides. Iggy has picked Joe. You have picked Timberfake. Do you think there'll be any uh, animosity in the in the announcing booth tonight of the fight? Because you guys are on different sides. Well, I don't think there's going to be any animosity. I don't know about Iggy. No, I mean, if you watch uh, Jim Lampley and uh, what's his name, Larry Merchant, they're usually on opposite sides of what fighters do and they get along. So I think we'll be fine. Yeah, it'll work for me. You're my Larry Merchant. Okay. And you'll probably talk as much as Larry, too. And your name is Larry. Yep. Larry Merchant. I'm gonna call you Larry Merchant. Okay. Friday night, all right? Larry Merchant Nickel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I uh, I think I think we're I think we're good, gentlemen. We look forward to the fight on uh, on Friday. Do you have any final words for the uh, fine folks of Inside STL that plan on coming out the PTs on Friday? Well, I got some words. Uh, well, you need. A, if you don't have the money, don't come out. But if you do got the money, get a ticket at PT's. Way to promote it, Larry. <laughs> and of course, I think you can also buy them on uh, InsideFTL.com. Any, uh, anything from you, Iggy? I would suggest that uh, everybody come out and watch because it's going to be great in person. But then go home and listen to the podcast because I do believe that the broadcast is going to be epic. Uh, Larry making his debut in front of the camera as far as a boxing match goes. I know you did a lot of work with Stephen D.C. back in the day on your birthday. Yep. Um, and we had the big uh, girl next door of the year where you were a judge, so you're used to being in front of the people, but uh, this is radio. Nobody will be seeing you. We will be taping it for the web, but yep. everybody come out because BT's has the most gorgeous girls in the country, um, and you're going to see a great fight, and then go back and listen to the broadcast because this is epic. I'm sure HBO will be looking at this, and Larry will be getting calls after that. Uh, you know, because Larry Merchant is about 106, so his days are numbered. Uh, Roy Jones can't put a sentence together, so you got something in common. But uh, I was expect HBO to be calling you after they see this broadcast, so uh, I think it's nothing but uh, up, up and away for you, buddy, after this broadcast. That's fine with me. Fantastic. We'll see you gentlemen Friday night for the fight. Okay. Can't wait. <laughs>